Everybody's path is not the same. There will be some kids that come through and they've been blessed by Heidi who just got it. The other ones, you gotta grind. And if you're willing to grind, you can make it. Until somebody tells you you can't, you keep going. That's even it. then, And keep even going, then, keep man. going, right. You know, I tell all kids, man, you play until there's just no place else to play. Welcome to the Tampa, Florida Pickup Basketball Podcast. I'm your host, Byron. And today we got Dominique, Ronnie, and Danae in the building. Yup, yup. What's up, everybody? Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Good, good, I had good. to be back. What's going on? It's been a minute since we've yes. done this, actually. Yeah, I had to be back. I mean, you guys had a little little experience with it, uh, with the uh, pro uh, day. It, and yeah. The, oh, yeah, uh, that was fun, Bay actually. showdown with Anthony. That was fun, yeah. For me, it's been, about, it's been about six weeks for me. Give us time to catch up. If you're a hooper in the city, uh, you know this man right here sitting with us, Ronnie. You know, glad to have him here. Appreciate you coming out. I appreciate the invite. Yes, sir. I love it. I love yes, it. Sir. I think we want to get to know you before we jump into the Wiregrass stuff and, mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know, how you run one of the top leagues in yes. the city. Let, let's talk appreciate a little bit about you and kind of where you, where you come from. Originally, I'm from uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I grew up, went to high school there. Went to two years of junior college there. Oh, wow. Um, okay. After junior college, I went to West Virginia University. Where'd you go junior college? Community college there in the city called Central Piedmont Community College. Piedmont. And, and it's a weird, it's a unique story, but I mean, it's, it's amazing how like, you never know what lightning gonna strike. Mm. So um, unfortunately, when I was a junior in high school, my father passed away. Mm. So um, I had to help moms out, single mother, you know, three, three kids, so I started working. Um, finished up high school and I just was like working a job and wow. playing at the rec center. I lied on the application. I went, I, I filled out an application to be a, a paralegal and I lied on the application and said I had a degree. Back then there was no internet. Everything was like on over the phone. So they never really, they never checked on it. Wow. So I worked there for two years and I did, I, 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 I attacked it like I attacked basketball. So I did wow. a good job and the lawyer, he called me in the office one day and because I did a good job, doesn't give me a promotion. Part of the promotion is they got to check my references. Oh, no. So wow. he sat me down. And I can still remember the look on his face. And he's like, you know, what, you know why we're here. And I knew it. My heart dropped. He said, but you did such a good job. I talked to the partners. So there's a community college in the city that has a paralegal uh, program. I'll pay for it. Wow. Wow. You graduate. You come back here. You work for me. And, you know, and I, cause I told him, I said, I really want a job. So, you know, no harm, no foul. And so I'm at school. Um, just taking school, and I'm in the cafeteria, and the coach walks by, and he sees, hey, big man, you play basketball? I was like, yeah, man, I play a little bit, you know. He's like, hey, we have a team. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> well, back then, I mean, I was, a, I was just a runner and jumper. Like, I, I couldn't really play like I know now how to play. I went out to the first practice, and I was like head and shoulders above it, everybody, um, just from playing in the neighborhood. We finished that season. We weren't very good, but I, I finished the season fourth in the nation in scoring. Oh, um, sure. And again, that's like I, no jump shot, just wow. taking it off. I mean, just tagging the basket, just dunking on people. Um, so then the second year, that coach got fired, and um, they brought a coach in who had just left Division One. And I still remember the first day of practice. He, when he got the job, he called me. He's like, "Heard about you. I want you to come back. I think we can have a good team." And first day of practice, it was six seven, six eight, ah. it was seven footer. Okay, I'm like because he basically he took guys from like North Carolina, North I'm Carolina familiar. State, Clemson, guys that right. weren't getting minutes. that weren't getting right. minutes who I'm like familiar. for whatever reason yeah. they weren't it wasn't working out, and that was before the transfer portal. And so he brought man, I I was in that gym. I was like, oh my god, what is this? And he was like, we gonna press and we gonna run, and yeah. you know, so that, you know that that's that second year team. We ended up being at one point we was fourth in the nation. Um, wow. My scoring went way down, of course, because I had better players, but I started, you know, getting looks and stuff like that. And um, it just, it, it was a thing that, you know, when we finished, um, he was like, yo, you, you, could, you could use this to further your life. He's like, I know you did the, you know, the paralegal, um, but you can even go further with basketball. And so- um, all relationships. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Um, the good thing about it is like, at that time, um, he was like, man, I think you should go to HBCU. So I went to I went to Salem State, workout. I worked out for him, and the coach loved me. Off, offered me a scholarship. Wow. Went home. I was all excited. And about a week later, I got a call, and 
the coach that was there, he's a legendary coach. Like before Krzyzewski and those broke records, he had the most wins of any college coach, Clarence Big House Gaines. Yeah, you know, and he retired like a, literally a week after he signed me. Mm. And he was like, man, I still want you to come. Our assistant coach is going to take over. So I was like, hey, cool. Um, I'll try it out. Yeah, I'll, yeah. And again, I love the campus. And, I, you know, I went to one of their games and, you know, a black college basketball game Crazy. is nothing like you. Yeah. Like they had the um, band going. They had the cheerleaders. The gym, like you could just feel it. And I was like, man, I want to be a part of this. And my style was like running and dunking. They was like, man, you'll come in, you'll be a star. The coach that was supposed to take over, the assistant coach, they hired a coach out of left field. He called me. He was like, we don't play that way. Mm-hmm. He's like, even though, you know, I looked at the tapes, I talked to the coaches, the way you play, we changing up everything. We're going to change. So I was kind of left out in the lurch. And the good thing about it was uh, one of my friends from the neighborhood, his father was a West Virginia alumni. And he was like, he said, you know, my dad got me a workout, but at the time I had a car. So he's like, I don't have a way to get up there. I'll put gas in your car if you drive me up there. And y'all know how hoopers are. I always throw my bag and my shoes in the yeah. car. Right, you always got to piss. Always, just in case. So we drive up to West Virginia from Charlotte, and we go into this practice gym, and it's me and all the parents, and then like at the other bleacher was all the players. So he, he coach comes out, he goes, hey guys, I don't have any scholarships. This is a workout. If some of you, maybe you come as a walk-on, or I'll make some phone calls to some coaches, see what we can do. So go get dressed. So they all left. And it's me and all these like parents. And I'm just sitting there. He's like, young man, I said get dressed. I was like, well, sir, I just drove. He's like, you play basketball? I say, yes, sir. He's like, man, go just, because again, you know, just get some run. I got my bag. I went in. That was probably the best. Like, and, and again, I couldn't shoot back then. Mm-hmm. I was hitting threes. Oh, I, was, I was dropping people <laughs> off. Like, that's the best I had played. And oh, I was just, man. and I remember he he pulled me to the side, like they still playing. He said, "I want to offer you a scholarship." I'm even like, "What?" He even after he said he didn't have any. Oh, that's wow. and so crazy. I was like, "Well, I got to talk to my mother." And again, no cell phones back then, so I'm driving back to, to Charlotte. I get home, my mom's like, "Who is this coach that keeps calling?" He called about six, seven times, and I told her the story. And the good thing about it was, out of all the colleges I had visited, I talked about the partying. I talked about the girls. I didn't talk about none of that stuff. I just talked about basketball and the fact that West Virginia is in the middle of nowhere on top of a mountain. All I could do is study and play basketball. Right. And she was like, that's where you need to go. And so I, I went there and it was, Wow. I mean, it, again, it was a, just amazing, amazing wow. uh, two wow. years that I had up there. Um, so who was the coach? What was his Gail name? Gail Catlin. Gail Catlin. Yeah, yeah Gail Catlin. And um, he ended up, to me, I think it, it was the best thing that could have happened to me because one of the things that, he taught me how to play basketball because I remember first we had open gym and it was football players, dudes on campus. And like, I'm trying to dunk on everybody and you jumping on a six, 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 seven football player. Mm-hmm. Or at that time we had two like six, 10 guys. I mean, I don't care how hard you can jump. You, you still, they're gonna catch you and you go. Yeah. So they, you know, he's like, man, you gotta learn how to play. And Jerry West, you know, he went to West Virginia. His wow. old roommate was my assistant coach. Mm-hmm. And he, wow. and then I'm to my like, we had a thing in practice the whole time I was West Virginia. If you could out shoot Coach Cox, we didn't have practice. We had practice every day. Couldn't out shoot him. Couldn't out shoot him. How I'm is that about, possible? So, so <laughs> there's a scene in Blue Chips. If you ever watch Blue Chips, there's yeah. a scene where uh, Jerry West is, uh, I mean, Bob Cousy, he's out there talking to Nick Nolte, and they're talking, and he's shooting, and he never missed. That's, I mean, that's, this guy from anywhere on the court, he was old and rickety, but when he shot, and so he was like, I'm going to teach you how to shoot. So every morning at 6 o'clock, he, I had to get up and he just taught me how to shoot. What did shoot. he teach you? Just gonna put us on foot, footwork. Footwork. Key. The biggest thing is, is just your body and Key. from your waist up. No matter where you shoot, whether it's a free throw, whether it's you know a mid range, whether it's a three pointer, it all stays the same. Only thing changes is your feet and like how much you push with your legs. Um, and then just like a golf swing over repetition, repetition, yep. repetition. Because mm-hmm. again, like I learned how to really play basketball in the playground, and I had a couple of old heads that. They taught me, but they use me because, you know, like now we're older guys, but if you got a guy that's like going to play defense and rebound, you're going to play. So that's that's why me growing up in in my neighborhood. That's why you play. Yeah. Like we we would have, we had one rec center and it'd be 50 guys waiting to play. And so if you lose, you might as well go home. But the good thing about it was like, I'd always get with four old heads and then me because they was like, whoever the best score is, go get them. Hey, I need a rebound, go get him. So, like, I had, there's a guy who um, grew up in Charlotte, 
Uh, it's a legendary story about him and Michael Jordan. When I mean, it's Jordan, second, third year in the league. We used to play in the Pro-Am at uh, John C. Smith, another HBCU in Charlotte. And one day, Jordan showed up at halftime. He had 50. Dude, I'm talking about Michael Joe had 46. Basically, they play one-on-one. Wow. I had to guard that dude every day. And I mean, this is the type of old, old school guy where like at halftime or like in between games, he go smoke a cigarette. Wow. He go drink a beer. Wow. My but, God. <laughs> and his thing was like, if he ever would have focused and just like, he could have been amazing. But it's just, we, you know, every, every city, everybody has that story of yeah, those yeah, guys, those ones. legends, right. playground legend. He was a playground legend. Mm-hmm. And like, I had to guard him every day. And they would like force me to guard him. And they, he would cook me. But... I felt like if I can at least hang with him, hang with him, yeah. Yeah. people my age, yeah, yeah, come yeah, on, yeah. y'all ain't had nothing on me, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know. And so, so that that's kind of how my game was, you know, athletic, play defense, uh, mm-hmm. hustle. And so then when I went to school, you, you know, developed a shot. That, yeah. And the crazy part is, so after my junior year, again, I had the reputation of just don't let him take off. So we playing in pro am one day, and you know, I get the ball and they back up, let him shoot, let him shoot. Knock down the first one. Ah, oh, you got lucky. Next time, knock down the second one. They're like, wait a minute. By the third one, they're like, man, you've been working on your game, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's different now. It's different now. Yeah. yeah. And then you know. That's funny. And so, luckily, I you know I had a good career. And the same same way I got into college, lightning struck again. So so, so hold on real quick about the college before wow. we jump in because I know you played pro, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. So so with the college, West Virginia is a power conference, right? Yes. Yeah. So you played against some. Good, yeah, some good, some, some good, some good, some good schools. Good schools. Like, and so did you play against other, you know, NBA guy, other top talent? Uh, yeah, like so, like I you know, we were, at that time we were in Atlantic Ten, so we had like um, Aaron McKee, uh, uh, Eddie Jones. They was I, in my conference. I know, I know both of them. Hey, yeah. Lakers. And yeah, yeah. Aaron McKee was. Uh, he played with Philadelphia. Sixers. Sixers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Was, um, so we had like UMass. We had Saint Saint Bonaventures, like Rhode Island. Yep. You know that was our conference, and then. We didn't make it to the first year, we didn't make it to the tournament, but my second year, my senior year, we did. We went to Oklahoma and played against them. Um, Who knocked you guys out? They did. They got okay. you guys? So, wow. I mean, that first round there? Uh, first round, and I think uh, a lot of it too was like, NCAAs are a whole different animal. Like, yeah. you know, we played Atlantic 10. At that time, we played on campuses. So, it'd be a packed gym, but it's nothing like playing in an arena. Yeah, and like, then like, you know, you walk out for warmups, it's 50, you know, credentialed, Media yeah. people, yeah. and it, you know, you look over there like you know, Dick Vitale is doing the game. Yeah. It's just different we just vibe. weren't ready. Different yeah, vibe. Yeah, different we just vibe, weren't ready, yeah. and, oh, and okay. it was you know, we knew. I say by like midway through the first half, we was like, either we got to start hitting, you know, getting lucky hitting shots, or we in it for a long day. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, so they knocked us out, um, and then you know, again, it was experience. That's the thing. It's like you just want to go for the experience, mm-hmm. and then again, you know, you walking around the hotel. And you know, you like I say, you, you see, you know, people that you saw on the news or on TV, or you know, we didn't get a chance to play national TV games, but some of those teams did. So you're like, man, I saw him on yep. CBS last week, you know. So yep. wow. the experience was like, oh, it was awesome. Yeah, yeah. that was back in uh, Dickie Vitale's wow. that was in yeah. his day back then. Yeah. Yeah. WVU, yeah. that was part of the Big East, uh, in like probably we, like eighty nine, ninety then probably. Yeah, so they yeah. they switched because of like again, football started to take over. Yeah, and so they switched to the Big East. Um, you know. We we were a football powerhouse when I was there, right. and again, like we were in Atlantic Ten, but then football just got so big that you know they had to they they switched to, to the Big East. Yeah, because I think St. Bonavere, uh and, Bonne- and then um, Rhode Island are like like small mid majors now. Yeah, right? yeah, right, they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And again, it's because of football. So you so tell us a little bit about the pro, like how that whole. So um, again, I graduated. I just thought you know that's it, you know had a great career or whatever. Um, and I'm playing in the pro am again, and in the pro am, you know, every team had two or three like current pros in Charlotte back then. So like you'd have Charlotte Hornets guys, you'd have come people who would fly in. You could fly in and if you're a pro, they automatically put you on the roster for right. that day. And so my teammate, he played at uh, Coastal Carolina, okay. and he played overseas for like by that time I think it's like four or five years. Um, so his agent was flying in, it was like they was gonna have lunch. So he came to the gym, and I had like four highlight dunks. I mean, it was just like, it was crazy. crazy. Yeah, it was like, and he, after the game was over, he said, you know, I'm, you know, I'm agent. You ever thought about playing ball overseas? And I was like, nah, man, I'm, you know. And again, at that time, it's like, yeah, everybody's, you know, shoot the smoke up your skirt, or whatever. I was like, I, he gave me his card, I threw it on my, on my account, I didn't think about it. He 
He called me about a week later. He said, man, you need to get a passport. He helped me expedite to get a passport. Um, and wow. my first job, this is crazy. So wow. my first job, um, I go overseas. And it's More in country, a, yeah. Slovenia. Slovenia, okay. Yeah. And way out. Way out. Yeah, way, yeah. way, way, yeah. way cold. out. Sounds yeah. cold. I, the, <laughs> Sounds cold. So the, the, <laughs> this is the crazy part. So first, they lied. Well, my, my agent lied and said, I could play in the post. Yeah, I, I could play in the post against Americans, or whatever, but these like European 6'9, 6'10, 280. Even if Big I could bodies. jump, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, what am I going to do? So, first game, I go over there and I get, I get killed, I get smashed. Second game, I had a decent game, um, but they was like, nah, you, you, you ain't what we want. So, they was like, we're going to send you home. My agent called me and said, don't go nowhere. So, I literally sat in my hotel room for like three days. Nobody speak English. The hotel I stayed in, they had a restaurant downstairs that had a fixed menu. So you just go down and whatever they serving. So they had like frog legs and oh. meat was like greens. I'm out. I, I'm out I had Snicker bars and like Doritos. That's I lived off of that for like three, four days. Wow. He just said, this guy gonna come pick you up. Guy picked me up, put me in the car. We drove like six hours um, until like it's a small island uh, that tipped up. It's called Malta. Oh, um, like the Maltese oh, Falcon. That's why I played it. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah I played Malta. So I did too. So oh, snap. they sent me to Malta, wow. right? I mean, I, the thing about Malta that's was funny. you only have one foreigner, one American. Yep. So it's still like that. It's still yep. like that? Yep. Yeah. So I went and played, and I was lucky because um, there was another guy named Don Ross. Don, probably at that time, might have been 45 years old, but he had been playing there forever. Had a crazy shot. We don't play with guys like it. Shot top of his head, ugly, Bucket. but he go in. Bucket yeah. bottoms, yeah. yeah and so, going, like, wow. so me and him, you know, we started talking. He's like, man, you do right, man. You finish it. You finish a you know good season here. Some good stuff will come from it. So we ended wow. up. We made it to like the finals. Um, we got beat, um, but it was good. And then before I even left, they was like, fly over to Italy. Wow. Team wanted to sign you, and wow. so they signed me there. And, that is so crazy. And then it just went from like I did like four years in Italy. Wow. I was in Austria. I was that in Lebanon. So uh, I was oh. in Germany. And he was all over. Yeah, yeah because all over. so here's the thing: like my agent was he 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 really guided me. He said, "Before you come home, we gonna make sure you got a contract so your summers you could just chill." So I would literally like if my contract was up and they didn't really want to resign me, I would go like four or five different workouts before I came home. So like if say if the season ended on Sunday, he would you know back my ticket up for two 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 weeks, and then I would just go different places, workout workout, talk to the teams. Because in Europe, they love if, if they can put their hands on you. So like if you already playing there, you come work out. Yeah. Even though it might be somebody in America who NCAA got all the credentials, they like the fact that you right here. They, they see, know what they're they gonna get. Already, right. yeah. And the fact that like I had already proven I could be a pro because it's You've you know been there for so many I've years been already. there for so many years. And that's the thing, is like so many guys, I should just I see guys, I talk to them, I try to mentor them. I'm like, man, being a pro in Europe is different than at home. Like you gotta really respect, first of all, the country. Culture. You gotta respect the culture. Yeah, right. You gotta respect the, respect the game. And you have to be your own like trainer. Like all that stuff you gotta do yourself. You can't rely, you know, when we're home, you know, hey, this is what time we practice, this is what time we got workouts. You had to do all that stuff on your own. So, you know, I try to tell that to guys, and that's I prove to them like I could be a pro. They didn't have to worry about me. I be at, you know, practice on time, I stay late, I get there early. You know, if they got shooting stuff going on, just, and so once I proved that, I, I mean, until I retired, I still had offers to play. So how many years did you wow. play? Wow. Total, I did 15. Oh. Played 15 oh, so years overseas. Yeah. yeah. yeah all yeah, I did over. 15 That's a career right there. I thought yeah. you was like a little yeah. 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 I did 15, 15 years oh. total. And the crazy part is like, I still remember like 9-11. So I was playing the Middle East during 9-11. Oh. And I was, I was home actually watching it on television. Me and my son, and it's just like, you know, I was like, am I gonna do this again? And I still remember, I flew over uh, back to Lebanon, wow. um, and I played like half a season. And it just, the, the environment had changed, because before 9-11, the Middle East, they loved Americans. They loved, and, and in Lebanon especially, because they got McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Subway. Like they, at that time, they, they wanted, they Western, they wanted they to be America. Yeah. They wow. had like nightclubs, you know, everybody drove around in nice cars. And then when that happened, it, the whole tenor changed. So like I was being cheered before, like I'll come out and they just, like they be booing me. Well, yeah, what just because you're American. Heck? Just because I was American. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so I played half that season. And as a matter of fact, Chris Ward, 
He, you know, yeah. he he yeah. played with me overseas Coach too. Ward, he was, yeah. Coach Ward, yeah. So he he's playing for another team. Me and him had a nice little conversation, man. He we both he yeah, the same thing. Same thing, right? You know, it was just like so this is before or after we because we attacked wow, back, man. Right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, this was after. Yeah, this was so after. After we, yeah. after we attacked, and at yeah. that point, and yeah. so like you know, yeah. it was just like. And uh, he was saying the same thing, like, man, I kind of miss home. Yeah. This ain't like, you know, it used to be fun, and now this yeah. is like... So. Dangerous a little bit, for real. <laughs> for real, for real. Yeah. 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 Exactly. That's the thing, yeah. you, know, yeah. you know. Before, it's like, you know, 99% of the people there, they like, hey, America. now it's the other way around. They like... Get out of here, bro. Yeah. So yeah. I was just like, yeah. yeah. And so I, you know, I, I came home for so, Christmas, and it's just like, I told my wife, I was like, that's it. So where was your... Uh, that is... I'm gonna let you Incredible. guys get in here in a second, but what was your favorite place to play? Like, I, you, yeah. Yeah. I say two places: Italy because of the money. I'm not gonna lie, mm. money was good. Yeah. Um, that's and, why, and, that's and, why and you basketball was good. So long. That's why I stayed there so long. And yeah. at that time, it was the second best country, you know, league in the world because like mm -hmm. Cool Coach played over there. Mm -hmm. Dominique Wilkins, when he retired, you know, when he left the NBA, he played over there for a couple of years. Um, so I mean, they treated you well. The games were like NBA games as far as like the production. Um, so that was as far as on the court, but I gotta say, man, I stayed in Lebanon three years. Mm -hmm. I loved it, man. Really? I, I, yeah. I, because so here's again, like all the clubs are owned by like big time, you know, clubs that had had money, and so they would the way it was. It was very top heavy. So the top four teams, they treated you like king. The bottom four, mm, you know, <laughs> not so much. <laughs> not so much. Right. Yeah, but you know. Again, the basketball was awesome because every team had one or two guys. Like, I played against Scotty Thurman, um, George Ackles, Anderson Hunt. So, like, as far as, like, one-on-one, -on -one, you was getting the best basketball. That, you know, you, again, these guys that played, you know, high D level, they played in the league for a little while. So, we was going back and forth, and then the teams got behind you a lot. Like, you know, they, they really was, you know, it's like a soccer game. You come out of the stadium, like, you in the the locker room, you could feel the stadium moving because they just wow. cheering for you. That's are crazy. Nice. Yeah, yeah, right. And so they, that same energy was on the basketball court. Um, and, and again, they, you know, it, it was just, I loved it. They treated my family well. You, you took know. the family out there? Yeah. Or some uh, of it? Some of it. Um, yeah. My wife, she, love her to death, but she can't sit still for two seconds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she didn't do well. Like, you know, she's always worked her whole life. So just being like the basketball wife and just being at home with the kids, nah, that wasn't for her. And, you know, I would be at practice or working out or doing stuff with the team, you know, six, eight hours a day. And she's in another country just there with the baby and just like, ah. Uh. And then when my son got born, she's like, I'm not doing, I'm not taking both of them over there. Right. And so, yeah, so they stayed at home um, and it was just, you know, long distance. And again, that was when you had to make a phone call, you had to go to like a hey, cafe. Yeah, so I was a cafe. It was the yeah, internet so cafe. challenges with that. Yeah. 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 In yeah. itself, just being long distance. Just being like long that, distance. With your yeah. family, so birthdays, like, Christmas, yeah, holidays. That. Yeah, so I already yeah. know. How long were you in Italy for? Uh, I did five years in Italy. Probably. Five years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So five years in Italy and three years in mm -hmm. uh, Lebanon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. those, are my, those are my two longest stints. And then again, it was just like, I would come on and I played in the CBA for a year. Okay. Um, and then um, I was injured for a year and a half. Uh, when I... I was on a, the Hornets uh, preseason roster, mm -hmm. and we played a preseason game in South Carolina, and I still caught the ball in the corner, pump fake, one dribble, went to, went up on a, I thought it was big man, and he bent over, oh. and I hit his, oh. and I broke my arm, and oh, that's had, you know, had screws and stuff in it, and so hey. what happened was, because we weren't, if we'd have been in, in Charlotte where they had like sports doctors, right. they would have put me in a cast and a sling, I'd have been out maybe six months. Right. But because we were in South Carolina, the doctor had no, he just was a regular doctor. He wasn't sports medicine. He put pins and rods in my arm. And that made me be out a year and a half. Oh, man. Yeah, because think crazy. about it. If your arm is like this for six, eight months, yeah. it atrophies. Yeah. So when they took the pins out, little was like little. my wrist basically was the same size all the way up. So I had to rehab first, getting range of motion, getting strength back. And then like shooting and stuff like that. Was your right hand too? Left. Oh, left. Okay. Yeah, because when I I went up and I put my arm out and I hit. <laughs> okay. Yeah, which they say you're never supposed to do, but when you, I mean, you fall, right, what you gonna do? You fall, what you gonna do? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, right. yeah. So again, I, you know, I just bounced around as much as I could. Um, once I started to, like I said, that I, I got tired of going to NBA camps in the summertime, um, and you know, you do well, but you're not gonna make the roster. So once I just they already know what they're gonna take. They already yeah, know what they're gonna yeah, take, yeah. right? Yeah, and so you know, once I, I came to grips with that, and I was like, I'm just gonna be a European player and, and, and make a career out of it. Um, you know, I, it was just I just kept picking right places where like, hey, not only made the basketball might not be the best, but it's a good country, you know, good good experience. Wow. And then like you said, just 
get in different cultures. And that, that's the biggest thing is, I mean, I, I've seen places and, and I've, I've eaten in people's homes that, you know, you can't even imagine, man. It's just like, wow, y'all live like this? But you can't say that to them. But that's how it is, though. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, you've had, I've had some, some teammates, they take me back to their house, man. I'm just like, and I make, and you, you feel bad. It's like, man, I'm different making worlds, house like that, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, just, it's a totally different world. Yeah, but it's, yeah. it's just, it's just wow. like different worlds and worlds, like I told you earlier. Now. So, as far as the basketball in Tampa, mm -hmm. right, do you think wow. we've got a lot of talent where we could send a lot of guys overseas? We do. I, I, I mean, my only thing with, with, the, with the, the talent in Tampa is that, like, a lot of guys, and again, with, with NIL and people getting paid, like they have to like be a little bit more realistic of, of where their path can go. Gotta be humble a little bit. Gotta too. be humble. You gotta be humble. So like, you know, again, with transfer portal and stuff like that, say if, if I'm if I'm coming through high school, I'm not even looking at a D1 school if, if I'm not like a top 20 kid. Top 100 I, kid. Yeah, yeah. Because, because- Top 100 his, ESPN or right, something like right. that. Right, right. If yeah. I'm just, you know, maybe I might be the best kid in the city. In I'm play. A, I'm gonna go D2. Shine for a year or two and then transfer because it because again it's changed the whole thing wow. has changed and you don't want to burn years. I mean, not playing, not playing right. at a D one. You on the roster just because of the, what the jersey say on the front. Because yeah. now as y'all y'all know, it don't care. They don't teams don't care where you play. They'll find at. you. Yep. They'll yeah. find yeah. you if you can really find you. Especially with the media now. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, Especially with social media. Right. Yeah. Social media. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 If they see you on there, you could play. You could be a Saint Leo and let's say you know you average twenty at Saint Leo. That's like miles better than, say, I go to University of Florida and I average six. I mean, come on. Because, again, St. Leo, I'm on the court for four years. I'm playing. I'm, I'm learning how to be the man. That's how you get better. Yeah. That's yeah. how you get yeah. better. You get better by playing. Exactly. You don't get better by watching. Right. And so, I mean, that's the one thing about Tampa is that, you know, some of the young kids, and I talk to them all the time, it's just like, you know, tamper down your initial expectations and be prepared to work. Like, everybody's path is not the same. There will be some kids that come through and they've been we blessed with height. You just yeah. got it. You just got it. Yeah, yeah. They, you're going to get that golden ticket, but the other ones, you got to grind. And if you're willing to grind, you can make it. I mean, I, that's the biggest thing is that you have to be willing to grind and, and, and never, until somebody tells you you can't, you keep going. And it's even a, then, yeah. keep And even going, then, keep man. going. Right. Yeah. yeah. You just, like I, you know, I tell all kids, man, you play until there's just no place else to play. And then yep. you become, you know, a morning hooper like us. Right. <laughs> Washed up. Yeah. <laughs> Washed up. Wow, your story is incredible. I was just, you know, I thought you look hooper. That's yeah. Crazy. You're a big hooper for real. Like, that's big, crazy big a hooper. Bit. I'm saying you're a big hooper for real. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Wow, it's that's, incredible. I mean, that's the one thing is like, you know, when we play sometimes and people ask me, man, how old are you? They don't realize I'm 58 years old. Yeah. Well, and I, I didn't still, realize that now. Ronnie, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Ronnie, Ronnie, Ronnie. I thought you was like 50, like, 48. You, I didn't know you were 58. Yeah. Yeah, you 58? Just, well, then yeah, you're 60, baby. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, Wait, so, hold on. I so, why haven't you invited me to uh, none of these morning open rooms? Hey. We do. I tell you about it all the time. Yeah. We're Hold we, on. We you fit, you yeah. 58 for real? Yes. Yeah, that's crazy. Man, I'm yeah, finna come out of retirement. Come that's on, crazy. Come on, that way. Come so, yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah. You're 58? Scott, and you be running Scott, Scott, four Man, you be running. Yeah, you're running. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm winning. I'm, I'm playing, yeah. You know? I mean, that's the thing. Like, oh, you, heck if, no. If you just keep playing, that's... I. You can't stop. Once stop you stop blood, and you yeah. get like out of out of shape, it's it's, it's, it's hard to get back in. Yeah, but if you keep playing, I mean that's that's why we do. So like you know we do the morning runs. Yeah, yeah. I play in the men's league when I can, and I just whenever I can play, I just get out hey. there. You have to. You, yeah. You telling the truth? Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. Real? I, mean, I didn't use fifty. I thought you was like come on 50. 50, 52. I take I take, like, hey, I take all I take all the numbers. Yeah. yeah. Hey. I know you fifty eight though. Yeah. Oh man, you still getting busy. That's actually impressive. It is. Appreciate it. It's very impressive. Let's fast forward to the Wiregrass Ranch. Mm -hmm. You know, see, I know you from back in the day playing at the Tampa Palms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, where you said, you know, yeah. me and Renee and, you know, all them guys, Pat and all those guys mm -hmm. would be right. at Tampa Palms, I think, two days a week. It'd yep. be like Tuesdays and, or Mondays and Fridays or something mm -hmm. like that. And then Sunday, too, actually. Yeah, Sundays. yeah, we used to do Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Sunday I run remember Sundays. Fishes. Yeah, yeah. I remember that Sundays. Sunday run, everybody would come out there, right? Yeah. How'd you get affiliated with the Wiregrass Ranch? So the crazy, the crazy thing is that like um, I was working as the operations manager at a hockey rink in Wesley Chapel, mm -hmm. and um, a group came through. They say, "Hey, we were about to build this sports complex, and we're just kind of looking at different sports complexes and things around the area." And someone said, "Hey, you know, that's a basketball guy right there." So at the time, the owner, you know, he struck up a conversation, and I kind of gave him a, a little synopsis of my background. He's like, "Take my card. Let's stay in touch." 
you know. So, you know, he never should have gave me his card. I hounded him, man. I was like, I would call, hey, Richard, man, let's let's talk, you know. So we go out for coffee, we talk, and our vision about youth sports and like what it should be, it aligned. It was like, you know, magic. Like we, he thought like I thought. He had some great ideas I had. So we just stayed in touch. And that whole process was probably two, three years before they broke ground. And wow. he called me, he said, yo, we breaking ground. I went to the groundbreaking ceremony. Um, and then he offered me the job. He said, before we even start, you know, any kind of construction, I want to offer you the job. You know, at, so at some point I'm going to call you and say, it's time to come. Um, and he did. He called me, said it's time to come. So we, you know, we met it before the building was finished at a hotel um, ballroom and just hashed out what we thought, you know, Wiregrass should be. Um, and, you know, for me, it was a blessing because that this is my dream job. I mean, I love basketball. Yeah. I love being around the kids. I love working with the families. And it was just like, you know, match made in heaven. And I had the freedom to build that program in my vision, what I wanted it to be. Wow. Um, you know, and so I, I did. I built all the programs from scratch. And, you know, and the good thing about it is I had the connections in the community with, you know, a lot of basketball players. And, and I, I knew, like, you know, like we talk about the, the men's league, I knew what I wanted the men's league to look like. And so, you know, it's a, it's a daily grind to keep my vision going. But um, like I said, it's, it's, it's been wonderful, man. I, my wife said I work too much, but <laughs> it, it ain't work when you love what you're doing. So, right, absolutely. I mean, that's, the the, uh, the uh, men's leagues are like almost pro-level guys in there most of the time, but the, but, but the Saturdays and Sundays for the kids, you got like... yeah. You probably have like 180 teams now. Like, oh, it's it's actually crazy. Yeah. It's, I, it's I average tournament for like youth, averaging about 120 teams a weekend. Um, Jeez. The good thing about it is, uh, you know, I pride myself and my staff in making it an experience for the parents. Yeah. Again, my son, you know, he's a hockey player, so I did travel hockey. I mean, I you know, I did basketball growing up, so I know what it's like for a family to stroke that check. Yep. Yeah. And get on that airplane or got, drive in that car. Stay in a hotel. Stay in a hotel. Yeah. Spend all yeah. Saturday, yeah. all day Sunday. Yeah. My goal is to like every event is when they walk out, I try to touch as many kids. Hey, how you doing, man? You having a good time? Nice. Mom and dad, yeah. mom and dad, is everything good? You need anything? Because I want that experience. Because I feel like if they go home and they tell their friends, we had a great time at the tournament, but the facility was awesome. The yeah. staff was awesome. Yeah. Like we even, you know, treat the vendors, everybody. We just try to treat them like family. And so that's what we try to do. And so that's why, like, first tournament we had, you know, 60, 70 teams. Now, a lot of times directors be like, man, I had to turn 40 teams away. Yeah. Are you because serious? they all, yeah, because they, they all, the two things. One, everything's under one roof. So if I got two kids or, you know, we, we buddies, we, we family, we travel together. I don't want to go, hey, you playing over here and then across town somebody right. else is playing. Yeah. They yep. can all go right there. You know, like I is in the men's league. I can have a game here and I can look over here and see my boys playing. Right. So that's, that's the one good thing. Again, we're in a good spot uh, in the Tampa Bay area. Yeah, right um, off the highway. Right off the highway. Yeah. upcoming area. Exactly. We have hotels right hotels there. We're in a the neighborhood. Everything. We're not in the middle of nowhere. Yep. Um, and then again, when you add us, you know, throwing it, that extra in of, of making everybody have a great time. And so people are just, they're chomping at the bit to get in there. And, and the good thing about it is, Coming next year, we're gonna have a couple more national. We had the Puma circuit uh, come for the kids, um, so we're just wow. trying to get some more national rank type yeah, tournaments I mean, for those kids. So you wow. guys have done a lot of stuff. You've done the NBA, NBA. There was an NBA mm -hmm. combine, combine there. Combine yeah. there. Mm -hmm. um, I think you had like a Nike or Air, an Adidas or yeah. some, some type of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so yeah. So we that. had we had CP3. They came and, and did an event there. Um, yeah. And then again, all of those places when they go. That's their, their comments, like, man, this was awesome, mm -hmm. and we yeah. want to come back. That's good. And then they go and tell, you know, their people, hey, this is a place we need to look at because we need to come back. Yeah. Even with the local stuff, the Bay Area yeah. Showdown. Yeah, right, the right. The men's yeah. leagues. Yep. Right. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. Just the local AAUs. I mean, anything you do right. over there is top tier. Yeah, yeah. and that's, Different. again, we, we, we want it to be as professional and as high level as we can. And, I mean, it's just, it, we strive every day to get that. I mean, like you said, you know, you, we have the money tournament that comes there. You have mm -hmm. Barry oh, Show. That was fun. Mm -hmm. uh, the men's league, you know, my my guys in the men's league, they call me constantly. Hey, when you have another one? Because again, I, you Speaking know. Speaking of the men's league, mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys got playoffs this week, right? Yeah, playoff starts, yeah, this <laughs> Thursday. Um, what, what team's in first place? So in the open division, uh, we have two teams in by. Now y'all in the first place. <laughs> yeah, baby, it's gone. So y'all got to play. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
But yeah. I, you know what the crazy part is though? Like, I think this is the first time that I've seen top to bottom, any night somebody can get beat. Even yeah. on, even on the worst team, yeah. Yeah. they could yeah. they could beat you if you're not if you're not on your game. And that's all you want is a competition. You want guys to come in there and feel like it's gonna be good basketball. I gotta play tonight. If I don't, I get embarrassed. Mm -hmm. um, and that's you know, so so that that's been a big, big I think this year probably was the best year up top to bottom on both the open division and the 35 and over. I mean, that's a tough league over there. Yeah, yeah. I didn't like, you can't be a nobody playing in no, that. No, I can't game. do that. Is nah, the playoffs nah, nah. just one day? Yeah. No. Just Thursday? So we do uh, semi, well, we do the round robin the first week. Second week, we do semifinals. And then the last week, we do just finals. So it'd be a game, final game for the open division and 35 and over all on one night. Because I, yeah. I think that's better just have it all on, on one court. We can kind of showcase that one court. Yeah. And the guys, they like coming. Because it, it's funny, the last couple of times we had championship games, it was packed. Yeah. Like yeah. a lot of guys who played, they might have got knocked off, but they, they want to see that championship game. Yeah. I want to come and watch. So yeah, so we do that yeah. That's um, to give that that kind of championship feel. Um, and I mean, it, it, it's been good. So on Thursday we got semifinals, is what you yes. said. Mm -hmm. And then next week yeah. we'll have championship. Uh, no, so the following yeah, week. the following week. So we got yeah. three more weeks actually. So we'll okay. do okay. round robin semifinals and then finals. Okay, I got you. And it's quality basketball versus yeah. seeing you play now and an hour later you play again. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 I did that one year and. Oh, um, no. The crazy part was like the two semifinal games was fire. Like I mean, they was both of them went in a double overtime. It was great. Final game was it's horrible. Awesome. Yeah, because the guys are just tired. tired. Like, yeah. You can see they was like, man, we don't even care if we win. Let's just. But that's We're why I said, like, yeah. And so I and the good thing about it is you know I work with some referees that don't mind just coming for that one game because that was the thing. Is like refs like I don't want to come for one game. Like no, the one game you're gonna come for. I'm telling you. It's a quality game. It's a quality game. game. You're going to yeah, really like, get your work in. So then they were like, yeah, we'll, we'll do it like that. You know, Wiregrass and YMCA, I guess, I guess, uh, I guess, Old Tampa Bay area, right? Mm -hmm. um, how I phrase this question here without making it. You know? Make it. Make it. Make it. Let me just say, I'll do this here, right? Mm -hmm. Who do you think is probably the best player you've seen come through there? Give the me best like overall player. Yeah, overall player. <sighs> What's the guy from Dreamville that plays in the G League? Oh, you, this was a quick Dreamville response. Dreamville Who is Dreamville this Dreamville? person? Yeah, he, he, you know he played. He's, uh, I think his name. He from Tampa. Dreamville. The light skinned tall, yeah, tall dude. Yeah, tall dude. He's playing right now. Though. Yeah, he's playing he's, right he's now. The MVP of the G League. Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying you ain't even think about it. You he like? Knew, I mean, it's, nah, it's because, because you ain't because even. Because like, so when you walk in and you see a guy playing, you first thing you say is he played somewhere. Yes. And then you watch him for like two, three minutes, you oh. go, he played Wait, high he level somewhere. He yeah, 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 and yeah. then you watch him, you go, that dude's a pro. Like he is a pro. Yeah, you just off just off his movement, his explosion. Like he he got a second gear. We we watched the game this past like last Thursday. We were sitting there watching. He had like four threes in a row, like like effortless. From and it deep, wasn't from deep too. And it I wasn't even it. like he wasn't jacking it. He was just playing. What's this guy's name? Wow. Now we know I didn't know who this see. is. Is he? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. so, who y'all see him? His name is oh, Trevor Trevor McQueen? Yeah. yeah, him. Yeah. I didn't even mm -hmm. see I didn't, oh. even, I didn't even get a chance to find Trevor. it. Just Trevor. See, yeah. I've only seen him play one time, but see, I thought he was already a, a guy who was in a. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, I, feel I, feel like like that. I feel like he's an NBA yeah, guy. Yeah, he's. Right, that's what I'm saying. Right, right. He might not have had. I feel like he's NBA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, he's NBA. So he's that. When I think of him, I think of. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like he's that good? Yeah. Because he can he can turn it on when he needs to, but then. Again, he's a pro, so he doesn't try to. He never trying to prove himself. He's just playing. He's playing basketball. He's playing basketball. And, you know, getting but buckets. He already knows he's better than. And everyone. when like he can get off the yeah. floor, got a nice. Yeah, I, I would say as far all around, I would say yeah, him. So he's the yeah. best guy that's come through your league there. Probably. So yeah. as far as regular guys, right? The, you know, as far it, as us, it's a couple the, of them. The, so the, like the guys that you see on a day-to-day -day basis. I think Dre is a very like as yeah, Dre. I mean, for sure. I like playing with Dre because he's a point guard, point guard. Like yeah. he he makes a basketball play. He's I mean he, he's he's giving up like I would say Dre is like probably one of the better ones. Um, what's the name play with you guys? Lefty, Tyler. No, lefty. Um, left handed. Yeah. Tobias. Tobias. Yeah. He left handed. Yeah. 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 You like um, Tobias. Too. Yeah. I like Tobias. Yeah. 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 I like him too. Again, like all those guys. To me, when they play, I like their demeanor because they're not trying to prove nothing. It's just, right. hey, let's just, hey, let's let's play, let's, let's get booked, let's hoop. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and and he not a regular guy, but <laughs> I know everybody gonna hate me for this. Yeah. But when he really play and not be like Superman, like the Hulk, I think Reggie. If he's just not yeah. being the Hulk, <laughs> Reggie's unstoppable. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But if he's yeah. not, when he's being Bruce Banner. 
he still could kill it. But yeah, he, he, he turned to the Hulk. It's like, yeah, 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 he can't come in and dominate. It was at the gym. Oh, was Greg. He said that. Gary, yeah, Greg. Greg. Who said that? Greg, Greg said that. Silly. So, hey, who's Greg? Who's Greg? Yeah, I, if you see, you know what it is. Yeah, he played with us. That he is a silly. Yeah, like, so, and I'm, I'm telling him. They're human beings, man. I'm That's like, not even an argument. You wouldn't even. Because he was talking about shooting. And I was like, Walk off. would you consider Reggie a, a shooter? He said, no. I said, but if Reggie come in here and work out, Unstoppable. he'll make, make about 15, 20 in a row. Like, yeah. And that's just uh, you know your typical like you said when he played in the league he was a grinder he hustled right but he, he could actually role. hoop he yeah. played right. his role he and was, it just he was, was like, I was like man y'all not person. realize like the worst NBA player is well, the best the player you've ever well, ever seen in your life like, yes and we had that discussion and I was just like you know after a while I was like I, I can't even argue how did you waste time then, on it I know that was my fault that is crazy you know I even do guys in you bring a D two guy in like the top one he gonna have he gonna have his way right well no they they were saying that's just this particular gym here if you go to like other gyms like you go to Atlanta I said man you go to Atlanta Brazil California it don't matter you're bringing these guys who who in who in who in the 15 man roster in the NBA they're going they're gonna come in here and not ever be stopped. They're gonna right, shoot right. whatever they want to shoot, dunk whatever they want to dunk. So all that effortless too. It'd effortless. They're gonna right. walk to the basket. Everything. It's like we talking about him. Like, Anybody yeah. that goes against that does not understand the game. Man, listen. They don't. Guys really were saying that. Uh, yeah. I won't say this. You know what? I said to you, like. They're like Brody coming here, man. He would like Brody would, would never kill. he would never be stopped. He would kill. Right. He would never be stopped. Like Brody coming out like if he, he can sit on the floor with NBA guys. Right, right. Why are you man? You guys really got Brody scored with 12, 13 points a couple he times. Would, he would score 50 easy. But that, right? He's a super athlete. Yeah, exactly. He's, yeah, he's, he's, yeah. He's, he's, yeah. He's, super, That's his he's super explosive. So like he That's could go strength. by you in one dribble. It wouldn't even be nothing. He would nothing. He would walk by you. But that's the thing though, like the higher level you go up, you just think of it like this. So at pickup basketball, 6'4 is a big man. Exactly. Really, that's a guard for real. That's a guard. That's a guard. Mm. But then if that's you talk true. about pros, 6'4 is a point guard. And six five, small. six six. And you're small. <laughs> you're right. small for real, right. When I went, I, I went to Dallas Mavericks camp and I saw Jason Kidd face to face, I'm like, dude, you my size. He's like, yeah, but you look on TV, you think he's 6'1, 6'2. Yeah, but really, he's 6'3, 6'4. Right. Damn, that's a little bit too right. right. And it's just like, that's the thing, is like, you get a guy who's 6'7, six, 6'8, six, does the same thing that a 6'2 guy does in, you that's know, crazy. local pickup, yeah. it's totally different. And that's the thing, is like they don't realize bigger, stronger, faster, can jump higher. Just different athletes. Just different, mm -hmm. just different athletes. Yeah. Ronnie, let me ask you a question here, right? Let me, let me ask you a question. You know, you know I got Terry, right? Mm -hmm. I say to him all the time, I say, before I start any discussion with you on basketball, right? We got a preface about this right here, so I can know, you know, we're gon
can technically get the same training as a pro yep. can. Yeah, train yourself, right. And I, I mean, literally, like, he can go on, a, on YouTube, yep. do drills, and the same drills that LeBron James do, he could at least have those drills. Idea. Right. Yeah. And also, we, are, we, we have advanced in taking care of our bodies. Like LeBron James, from the time he started playing, he took care of his body. Right. My era, I mean, like, I remember, you know, stories about Larry Bird smoked cigarettes in between quarters. That's what I said. Come because on. Because he drunk beer. Yeah, like he literally, he would smoke a cigarette That's and drink a beer at halftime of the, uh, the Celtics game. What the hell? Oh, my because, God. Because, again, you got to remember, it was a different era. They didn't understand nutrition. They that didn't stuff was take, acceptable take, back that then. That stuff was acceptable. So that's why, like, now, skill-wise, but the problem is also there's more available to those kids and those ones that are coming up that they don't take care of the finer stuff, the fundamentals. Yeah. Like, yeah. most college players... You know, my era, and I'd say probably, except for maybe like the last 15 years, you would you would look to say, at least I'm gonna stay till three years. Like Tim Duncan, right. he stayed four years. You know, you know Jordan, he stayed until uh, uh, three years. Like those guys stayed into college because you were teaching. Pros is not about development. It's Pros about, about winning. Because right. if I'm if I'm a pro coach, I don't have time to develop you. Because while I'm doing that, we'll I lose, lose my I job. Lose my job exactly. Right. right? Yeah. So I, it's it's about win now. Right. The G League has come along, and that's supposed to be about development, but even then, you burning years. Like, yep. let's just say if it take you three years to develop in the G League, that's three years of being a pro. Yep. That's looked at differently yep. than three years, I'm coming out of college. Right. Yeah. That's and so that, and that's, what ha that's what's happening. So, like, a lot of the fundamental stuff, you're, you're missing that. Um, but, like you said, individually, yes. I mean, and, and also the game has changed. Right. The game has changed dramatically. Like, right. you know. There's no big men no more. There's no right. post. No, nobody knows how to do post moves. I mean, you got Jokic over there. You got to beat over there. <laughs> but they, but they, are, they are anomalies. And think about this, though. Both uh, of them shoot threes a lot. Yep, right. right. They, they, I mean, they put I the think, ball on the floor. Well, listen, they put well, the ball well, on the floor. Well, well, right. Listen, right. right. I, I think in B you shoot three more than yoga, but yoga you seen him, you know. He does, yeah, right, right. Uh, put your kid in the shelf, you say, you know what, I'm going, right. I'm going to the block, you can't stop me. Dang, AD. Damn, no matter who you are, I'm going to the block. But that's the thing, like, you know, they the big men now, they don't, they work more on. Away from the basket, then towards right. the basket. Well, I mean, I feel like I, uh, it's that was known now, but like the best players in the NBA, right, are no longer from the U.S. Like think about no, it. Giannis not. is the last. Right. NBA. You got Luca. Luca. You got you got Joel Embiid. Mm -hmm. You got Luca. Well, I'm sorry. Let's do the uh, last MVPs. You got Jokic, Embiid, and Giannis. Last whatever six MVPs. Yeah, that is mm -hmm. crazy. They're and all not. There. They're yeah. all not from the U.S. Right. They're yeah. all from Luka's and coming. then and then mm -hmm. Shea. He's also from Canada, yeah. but yeah. you know, he's well, from Canada. You know, you know why? Coming. They will be. You know why? MVPs. Because they focus on skill. And Europe has has the, the, the exact the opposite of, yeah. of what U.S. is. You, Europe you practice, is practice, 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 practice. We're gonna practice yeah. five days a week and play once a day, once a week. Yep. Right. The U.S. is we're gonna play five days a week and practice once. If you take, if you look at like AU, like we talk about it at my at my place, I see kids who, matter of fact, I have a, a, a team that I know of. They played 81 games as a travel team. That's wow. Damn, no way, man. 81 games. That's so just crazy. think about that. You I mean, got, practice never. Yeah, that's so crazy. So you're in the fifth grade. You play in 81 games of travel basketball. Wow. So when do you develop? You don't develop. Even if you're practicing once or twice a week, you, you can't develop. Right. Because, again, you know, travel basketball, AAU, is a performance platform. It's not right. a developmental platform. Mm -hmm. it's, to perform, it's to take the top of the top, you all perform. There's no development. And so that's, that's what the problem is. Like Luca, Luca, he he practice, practice, wow. practice, practice. I play one game, practice, practice, practice. I play one game. Yeah. If he was here in the U.S., they'd have, they'd have him playing. He'd have been fourteen years old playing U seventeen, and he wasn't gonna do. You're not gonna develop. Now that's that way. how, right? That's you know, crazy. you can be tall and slow, and really be out here just destroying people. Skill, yeah. yeah, right. I was gonna say like, and then like now, I do say that guys are much better, right? Athletically, physically, but they have no like a lot of times have zero. Basketball IQ, right, oh my right, goodness! You yeah. see a lot of guys playing with that sometimes. Like, yeah, how do you? Uh, very high percentage. Right. You know, what they are you might doing? not. They can shoot. They can, they can pass. They can but shoot, they can, pass, but it's no just IQ. Yep. like it's terrible game. to play with them too. It's not. It's not. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not, not fun, fun to play yeah, no, with. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's not fun playing with them at all. Yeah, because uh, again, I mean, you know, a lot of those those guys grew up, and again, we're, we're in the the travel basketball era, the AAU era, and it's just like, as soon as you get a little bit better than everybody, then it's just like we're just going. Take you and put four or five people that's all a little bit better, and y'all just run down the floor. 
Yep. Yeah, and just because y'all gonna beat teams because yeah, you got five kids that are a little bit better than everybody else. Do you see any teams now like that like run like I guess in the youth groups like that like, like run like sets or plays because most times it's kind of like a guy drives in, right? I find a yeah. shooting the corner like like it's no more like what, what do they call it like playing basketball action. You know, it's it's no more set plays. Hey man, pass the ball here, go to the wing. No, it's, right, right. It's, I'm gonna yeah. drive, try to penetrate and kick. Oh, I want to shoot a three, yeah. right? Yeah. Or I so I so I so I so I so. I think that's kind of like that in the pros a little bit too now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but those are yeah, but those are elite level guys. Like these kids need to be taught. Let's get the fundamentals down right. right. Let's, right. let's yeah. actually run some plays. Set you know, a pick. Is, yeah. yeah, roll to the basket. Set a pick. Right. You know, roll to the basket. A cut yeah. back door. I, 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 you know what I mean? I don't think nobody know how to pick and roll. Yeah, oh my pick goodness! Pick and pop, maybe. No. Right, yeah. right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. pick yeah. and yeah. roll. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. Winning, winning basketball, though. Right. Yeah. 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 Because I mean, uh, I've seen <laughs> so many like the new this new set they call five out. I hate it. It's just five kids standing around the three point line. So stupid. It's just. There's a, there's no motion, no screening, like you say, no screen roll. You could tell a kid who I play, you know, let's just say one of the high schools around here. He's a senior in high school, and then you tell him go off the ball screen. He'll go, huh? What? What? Well, right. That's nuts. Because See? all they know is they know five out. Whoever that's got nuts. all his moves, they just try to take the guy off the bounce. And it's like, has, do you set a screen? No. I had a, I had a dad. No. We was talking about this today. So his kid is is pretty good, and the team that was playing was face guard. And um, he went to halftime to the coach. He's like, Coach, you need to run some plays to set picks for my son. Plays, and I said, your son should be scatting screens for himself to get open. Like, yeah. if, if I'm being face guarded, I'm going to turn to a screener, and I'm going to set the screen, and then I'm going to pop out to get the ball. Yep. Didn't even know. And the dad was screaming. Somebody set a screen for him. I'm like, see, that's the things. Like, that's, that's just like <laughs> common basketball knowledge and IQ that the they world. don't have because it's all about let me get the ball, let me score. And not like, how can I help the team, quote unquote. Yeah. And, and that's, unfortunately, that's kind of the downfall of the U.S. game. Yep. Wow. Yeah, and that starts with the coaches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Parents, the coaches, starts with all that. Everybody, yeah. it's just being money focused, winning right. on the weekends, playing AAU. Yeah, because yeah, like one of, the, one of the things that um, like we offer at, at Wiregrass is a developmental program. And when I tell parents, hey, won't you sign them up for the developmental, they feel like it's an insult. And I'm what? like, no. That's the developmental is you're gonna get court time, you're gonna get practice, and you're gonna learn how to play. Right. And we're not worrying about winning, we're worrying about teaching. Because, and I've seen it a thousand times, you start doing that stuff where I just wanna play travel, travel, it's merciless. Like, I've seen, you know, teams that are beating a team 55 to 2, and they still full court pressing. Mm -hmm. yes. And kids are like literally crying, but there's no mercy because this yes. is travel basketball. Yeah, we beat a team this weekend by 55. Do you think that's a wear and tear on their body in the long runs when I, it comes to the injuries with I these do. kids at 19, 20, 21, more so than when we played? I think so. Because, you know, again, you they don't take any time off, and your body needs time off. Yeah. Your, your, your brain needs time off. Yeah. Just to mentally, hey, let me reset, let me get away. Like, you know, I grew up, I played every sport. I played baseball, basketball, football. You know, we played soccer, which we didn't know what we was doing. But it was just like, hey, let's just do something just to be active. Right. right now, everything is so regimented to like, you know, kids don't just take time away from the gym. Even in the off season, you can say, hey, take some time off, do something else, go play t-ball, whatever. Go be a kid. Go be a kid. How about yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> I still get the phone calls. We still get, hey, coach, can we come work out? And like you said, what happens is you don't realize it. Like all that stuff you do at 9, 10, 11, 12, at some point, 15, right. 16, 17, it's going to catch up. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. your body, that, you know, we only have, you know, I, I firmly believe this. You only have a certain amount of hours that you could put on your body. Yep. Without, without, with no break, you just, you just constantly wearing it down. It's like a car. You only can drive so many miles. Right. If you burn those miles early, right. when it's time, like when it really counts, eventually you go plateau. You gonna plateau. So, yeah. Eventually, so yeah. many injuries, yeah. yeah. Or Absolutely. kids gonna burn out, which I've seen yeah. that too. Where kids, you know, dads, are, no they come to me more. and they like, man, I need your advice. You know, he's in the twelfth. He's going to his twelfth grade. He tell me I don't want to play no more. Wow, like, he already played a thousand dollars. Yeah, you yeah, played him too much. A million dollars yeah. in basketball already. Yeah, because yeah. it ain't fun for him no more. Because mm -hmm. you think about it, if 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 you make it like work. When they're young, that's all they're going to think of. It's not fun no more. It's a job. And, mm -hmm. and at some point, like, if you play this game long enough, it becomes a job. The longer you can stretch that out, the better. Because when it becomes a job, you can't be like, man, like, you know, we can get up in the morning and be like, man, I ain't going today. Right. Right. And yeah. everything is cool. But you can't do that when that's your job. When that's you're in school or, you, or you're getting paid to do it, you can't just wake up and go, I don't want to go today. 
Because then they'd be like, yeah, you don't got to come today, tomorrow, or next right. week. Yeah. <laughs> you can go back home and we'll find somebody else. So Quick, too. Yeah, man. so like that's why you have to try to say, hey, don't burn yourself out. Just have fun with it. Because we all play now because it's fun and right. we enjoy yeah. it. We didn't get burnt out. Where like, you know, there's some people who are like, man, I don't even touch a basketball no more. Why? Man, I'm just tired of it. Right. Nah. Right. Brian, let you burn? <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe a little bit. What? So, yeah, maybe a I little bit. I, I, I can make him come back. No, but I find other ways to get involved. Like we do. Right, exactly. Show. Yeah, right. So I'm right. still, so he's still around the game. Yeah. yeah. So For the I, last I, three I, years, yeah. though, you half said you was going to go gonna play. play. Yeah, I mean, yeah. To his yeah, defense, you, you we're, that, we're waiting. Like, I must do it. I mean, like, I'm almost 40, so you know. Come on out there, man. I turn 40. I want to be like Ronnie, 58. Yeah, there's right. literally no man. excuses, man. Ronnie, you probably still don't, too, huh? Hmm? You can't see that. Yeah. Crazy. You yeah. telling me if I come up there one of these mornings, you you gonna be able to I dunk do that just basketball? You dunk with Drew ever or not? No, there's no way you still dunking this basketball. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You be able to walk up there and go boom. Yeah. I mean, I I've lost like so in my prime, like when I was really, I probably was like at a 44, 45 inch vertical. So I've lost a lot. So I'm probably still, 30. Probably. I mean, I can't like throw it down hard, but I can. Just I can put get it in. Yeah, still get it. Yeah. What? Oh, yeah. I just want to see you go. Boom. Yeah. But I'm not dunking on Drew. Yeah, not in July. Yeah, but I'm not dunking on Drew. Yeah, Drew's going to hurt you. Yeah, nah. I, to, the girl knows Drew. He's seen him now. We played today. Drew, he he Drew got me in the bowl. post, and I was like, you can have a bucket, man. I, I got to go to work. I'm not. Yeah, man, give you an elbow, yeah, shoulder not, kick, yeah. uppercut, nah, combination. It ain't worth it. No, 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 no. Let me give your thoughts on the transfer portal. Oof. That's a tough one. So uh, let me caveat this by saying my son transferred. So mm. I'm going to say this with a grain of salt. I think the transfer portal, the way that it is now, and the way that it's used by the majority of kids is a bad thing. Okay. Because yeah. it, it reinforces, I don't like what you're doing, so I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go. Mm. Like the, the transfer portal was initially like, okay, I go to a school. Maybe the guy that's in front of me is a lot better than I thought, so I don't want to get in playing time. I talked to the coach. We both mutually agree. So let me find another school where I can go right. to. Right, right, right. Now it's become, I don't like what's going on here. I'm going to go here. This guy, this school can get me more money. And it, it's just, it, it, it's hurting the game more than it's helping it. And it's I know that's, that, that wasn't the intention. Now. It's turned into a business. Oh, yeah. It's, like, Especially with the NIL deals and all the that. The whole like amateurism, they, they might don't even say that. It's over now. Don't even say student athlete anymore. Because again, if... If I'm on campus and I make more money than anybody else on campus, then how am I a student athlete? I'm just an athlete getting paid. I mean, it just again, it, it there's no regulation. It, it has to. We, they have to find a yeah. happy medium. Yeah, they're gonna figure it out. Though. I hope so. But I, hope like, so. I mean, they're gonna make the attempts to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know what's happening? But they gotta do something. They have to do something. You know what's right? happening though, right? Mm. Because for years the uh, the NCAA is a governing body. Was just out here like just that was terrible. Right? Yeah, taking advantage. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. They, they, you can't do yeah. that. Yeah, right. Making so now, billions of dollars, right. so, <laughs> more than right. that. Yeah. 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 But see, what they did was they overcorrected. So they went from yeah. not paying anything to like, hey, let's just throw everything at them and they can get everything. Which I was always for athlete, student student athletes getting paid a little stipend, like you right. know, some money again. You know, they put in their time. They put in their time. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, like they yeah. go get right. a job but, right. but, and make but, money. Yeah, but yeah. The, but the going from that to you know, you know Shadur Sanders making four million dollars a year, five million a year. Yeah, that's, that's, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. And again, yeah. as, as, as if I'm a coach, you see why coaches are getting out of the game because if I got student athletes and I I can't tell you nothing because you're making more money than me. I can't coach yeah, you. You can just leave, leave if I say the wrong thing to you. Yeah. At least that's the lowest. I mean, that's, so that speaks to how much money is actually in sports. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If they're able to pay this man right, $4 right, million? Right. That's yeah. crazy. That yeah. speaks to how much money's really, how much money they've right. been actually been making this whole time. Yeah. Once, once the TV contract wow. started to kick in and the TV uh, network started paying, um, and like I say, like football is a, is a booming business. So college football is like driving the, the bus. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, they signed like a one point you know, $1.5 billion deal for college football and you got networks bidding on it. I mean, it's just, it's just so much money. Like you said, it's, it's so much money out there and the schools and the athletes are taking, they're taking advantage well, of it. Wow. So it hurts the fans too. It does. Right? Because if you see what just happened with us, with USF, yeah, yeah, so. mm -hmm. one of the top teams, right? They end up not making the playoffs or whatever, not making the NCAA right, tournament. Right, right. And all of a sudden, we lose the whole team. Lose. Right, exactly. And these guys aren't just leaving because they don't feel like they can win next year. They're leaving because they're going to get money somewhere else. Well, yeah, well also, right. too, right? Remember, like, they, they were there and got no exposure, though, too. So That's the problem. Yeah, right. You can't, yeah. you can't have a team do what they did and then, ah, uh, right. 
Right. Right. We're He's not talking, gonna put you in NCAA. Yeah. So that just like, when, 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 when I'm young, young I'll leave too. Yeah. yeah, yeah like, right. I think, so I think, Coach, Coach Amir is probably like, yeah, I can't do no better right. than this. I right. Won, exactly. I won the right. division. Yeah. I wanted the right. I would say though, I think mm-hmm. the. I think I think the uh, I think the AL deals. I think it probably did like a good job for the women's game, well, college wise, because I think those yeah. those didn't probably make no money at all. WNBA for real, right? You know, I think, I think they, they they had some new deal or something. Like yeah, that. they just signed a new TV deal. Yeah. What's the, the new NBA? TV deal? Yeah, so making money now. Well, I think wait, like four hundred twenty million. What you mean? Uh, really? For, I think it was like eight dollar deal. Over like ten years or something like that. Clark, baby. Wow, and Reese, and Reese. Yeah, well, yeah, it's like um, it's almost like right. People like. People like, you know, uh, Reese and Caitlin Clark are kind of like Magic and Jordan. Yeah. But like, mm-hmm. I hate to say this, man. I want to say this. Uh, say it. I'm going to say it real quick, I guess, man. You know, like, people be watching when Caitlin Clark play for real. You know, they, they yeah. watch it. They, they pack the games out. When Reese plays, kind of like, you know. But I, I if think. If someone out. Yeah. I, I, I catch it. So, so, but, so it's like, I, I had the discussion, too. Like, part of it, too, is style of play. Like, yeah. Like, you look at Steph Curry, right? Little kids like Steph Curry because they can emulate Steph. They exactly, can throw yeah. the ball up. They can be him. They can be him. They can be and him. And they might, right. It's hard to be LeBron. Can't be LeBron. Mm-hmm. So that's the same way with Angel Reese. Like, you just watch her game. I mean, and I respect her and Caitlin. And like you said, I think it's a, a Magic Bird type situation where the two of them are great for each other. Right. The rivalry, all right. that goes around it, that's good for the game. But again, it's just like you got to remember the audience that you're talking about. Young girls see Caitlin Clark, they can aspire to be that. Unless right. you grow to be 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, Angel Reese is, is, is a different, untenable. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so, so like they that. look at it and that's they go, good. "I can be her," right? And they go, "I like her, but I can't be her." And, right. I, and I, that's why, like, when Jordan came along, he was such a mass appeal. He was six six. He was like the average size of a basketball player. Mm-hmm. He wasn't a seven footer. So then, kids growing up, Allen Iverson, who said it was because of Jordan, is who he was because he looked at Jordan. He go, "I could do that," but then if you would have looked at like Kareem or somebody like that. Or with all their greatness, he's like, I can never be that. Yeah. So that's the same thing that's happening right now with the Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese. I think it's just style and like the likability of their games, not who they are, but of their games. If Angel Reese came down okay. and started pulling threes, I promise you, it'd be everybody. Watching them yeah. things too. She be wow. watching those. Yeah. Yeah. Caitlin Clark, though. Yeah, she do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 the, and the game is. Glo- mm-hmm. Three pointers are glorified in the game right now. Yeah. Like if you go to a game right now, you can watch them running down the court. People will clap, they lay up, whatever. Let somebody hit a three. Oh, yeah, we're go crazy. Go crazy. Yeah. like, oh, just a three. But yeah. that's just, that's what they like. Yeah. It's unchanged. It's unchanged, yeah. You got something else to do? No, you guys got anything else? Yeah. I mean, I think I think we should do this like with every guest, just ask them for their leave. I uh, could be, be, be the guinea pig. I'll be the guinea pig. Nah, that's, nah we, know, we did it before already, but like, we think we asked Rob last time, uh, you know. You a Jordan guy or LeBron guy? Come on, man. I, 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 I got to ask you a question, right? I got a tattoo on, man. Uh, uh, Jordan, man. I got oh, a tattoo Okay, you know, I, I, I saw, you know. And, and, and here's the thing is like that, that Who's debate. Who's better, Jordan or LeBron? I think overall game, it, oh, see, tell the, the thing, truth. I, I, got, I still got to go with Jordan. I still have to. This uh, is why. You got to tell the truth. You said, you said all around, right? He's a killer. That's the only, that's the one thing about LeBron. LeBron's not a killer. LeBron don't put like... If you ask anybody to play with Jordan, you ask, you look at any other in, in the videos, even the people who don't like Jordan, they'll say it. He was a killer. They they lost sleep the night before playing. LeBron, he gonna he gonna kill you softly, but he not going he not a killer. So you saying like, like Jordan are like axe murder, LeBron right. like poison you type shit. There you go. Okay, I got you. There you go. Yep. <laughs> yep. So you say Jordan is better because he's just I just think like if you killed. take like well, even all around, like again, he, six six, he's a Great defender. He when he had to play point guard, he, he he played point guard. He scored like he he raised up everybody's level. Like Steve, people like Steve Kerr, Kyle Macy, guys who you never would have heard of. But, but Wait a before minute. you didn't say nothing that right, LeBron go can't. No, I'm no. Know. That's the thing. Is like bad, right, go, go, saying LeBron is is second is not an insult. Right. It's okay, just right. like. You got Jordan is one and LeBron is one A. Like that's, okay, I, 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 I think LeBron okay, to me is one A. Yeah, I like that. I, 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 I just think like you know uh, again. You got saved. I would say yeah. I would say Michael Michael <laughs> just because saved. he pioneered it, but I think right. overall LeBron's a better player. I think in every aspect of the game he's. Advanced, he's still playing, he played longer. Do you even like he's LeBron? He's bigger, he's stronger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like LeBron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love yeah, yeah. I like I to make sure, right. but I know yeah. a lot but of people. But Mike are. pioneered it, so that stands for something. I like yeah. I mean, you, know, yeah. you got guys saying that, you like know, that, you got Tim Duncan thinks he's better than. You know, no, no, yeah. no. They no, just don't like LeBron. LeBron. Yeah, yeah, if, like if, LeBron. Any, if you take them two, the only person I would put close to them is Kobe. Yeah. And the thing is, again, like he said, 
Jordan was a pioneer, so Kobe just did the copycat. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. He other, just yeah. he looked at Jordan, he went, that's the greatest so I So Kobe so could I never went, be yeah. better than Jordan because of that. He, he, would, I, he would have to, yeah. He's a facsimile of him, so like, He would have to take, a, man, like, yeah, he would have to take it to copy. another level, which yeah. is. And plus, I mean, I grew up in the era where, like, Jordan was must see TV, man. Like, you, you know, we had, you had to watch Jordan play. Like, it was just like, you watch TV and some of the stuff, because, like, if you go on YouTube now, you look at, like, his first five years, some clips that I, I was like, man, I forgot he did that. Otherworldly stuff. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. like, whoa. Uh, and again, I, I love LeBron. I mean, his longevity to me, like I said before, the fact that from day one, he said, I'm taking care of my body. He spends a million dollars a year on his body. Yeah, that's crazy. So like he yeah. he he had the that's forethought crazy. to go, I want longevity. Yeah, he I, committed I, I don't, to it. I want to I want to be in this game as long as I can. I mean, Jordan was from a different era where like he's like, I want to win and get out. Like, so that was his thing. It's like I did, I did what I, I came here to do. I'm retire. And then he came back, and then they, they did both it again. Billionaires now too, actually. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Billionaire now too. Yeah, yeah. he is. Yeah, he of is. course. Man, I want some of that money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, just let me get this. Taste right. Yeah, a little taste. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? That was crazy. <laughs> That's right. He said, a "Little taste." You got any, any any final messages you want to give to the to the, to the people? I mean, the, the one good thing, you know, please find Wiregrass Ranch Sports Campus, guys. Come see me. Come say hello. My door's always open. Um, you know, again, my goal is to make people fall in love with the game of basketball. And that's that's why we do what we do. Um, and so I'm just trying to make, you know, lovers of the game. I'm, I'm parents. I'm not trying to make your kid into the next LeBron or Jordan. I'm not trying to, I'm trying to make them fall in love with the game. And then whatever happens it. from that, you know, I'll celebrate it and I'll do my best to help. But it's just about loving the game, man. That's. 99.9% .9 of the people who play, they play for their love, for the love. So that's that's what we cater to. So hope, come out and have that's some right. fun. Either watch, participate, or support. Right. I love it. Yes, sir. I love it. Thanks for like, me. subscribe, comment. Yep. Hit the <laughs> bell, notification <laughs> bell. Appreciate something. You. Oh, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> it, guys. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Ronnie in the mm -hmm. building.